Hey there everyone, Hidesh here, your programming friend from YouTube. I hope you have hit that subscribe button. In case you haven't got that subscribe button, make sure you hit that and then we can move forward. Go ahead, do that. Okay, so let's move forward. In the last video, I gave you a simple assignment that as of now, we are going for a theme and that theme includes a greenish and this is bluish. So it's, it's not matching up anywhere near that we want it to be. So the simple assignment was change it, the background color into the greenish one. So obviously that's a pretty easy part. Now the point is you need to understand where you want to implement that green color. So first and foremost, we want to change the background color of this floating action button. So I'll not go inside the child because child is containing the icon. I'll go directly up here into this one. And this is the meat part of this entire flutter. You need to understand where you want to write the code because the callbacks are actually so much deeper into the part that it can get confused easily. So the property is pretty simple. I want to use a background color and I want to use a bar color here. As soon as I'll do that, that's pretty much easiest thing that you can do. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit, hit Shift and R to hit a hot reload there. And there we go. Our app is now matching up with the theme. So there we go. This is all good. And I think this is some of the easy part that we have done so far into the course. Now I want to go and move into the more advanced part, which is stateless widget and stateful widget. So first and foremost, it is important to understand what is the stateless widget and stateful widget. Now I know a lot of people might want to make very complex things about it. They are not very complex. Just remember the words just exactly the way I want to say it. Stateless and stateful. Stateless is data-less, stateful is full of data. That's it. End of the story. Yes, my friends, that's it. So let me give you more example of that to thoroughly explain that. But again, remember the concept, stateless is data-less, stateful is data-full. So stateless widgets are something which don't use any data. For example, if I just have a button and that button is a share button, and that just shares the data and don't keep a track of how many times the things are being shared, it doesn't really care about that that something is a stateless widget. And it's not about just the buttons can be widget, it can be anything, probably images, probably some of the text resources, uh, probably this icon set. So there can be times when it can be totally stateless. It doesn't care about data. For example, on the other side, if I talk about state full widgets, means data full widgets, the widgets that are having some data, that simply can be considered in an example, like I do have a like button and I want to I want to keep a track of how many times the like button was pressed by different users, probably 10,000 likes, probably 20,000 likes. So in that case, the state full widget is going to be useful. Again, there it's not compulsory that always I should have buttons in the stateless or stateful widgets. This is just a mere example, but surely just remember the term stateless is dataless, stateful is dataful. So that's all you have to care about. So this is like the basics that we are having up here. And now what we're gonna do is we are going to try and create our own custom widget using this entire thing. But we'll be doing that slowly and step by step so that we can understand how we're gonna do that. So what you'll be seeing in this entire project that we do have just one file here so far, Dart. And working out all the things in just one file is not so good idea. It's not a modular approach. For example, if I want to just change this ad icon probably at 100 places, it's not gonna make sense. So obviously it makes sense if I create multiple widgets and just call them whenever I need. So if I just make a change in one file, it just appears everywhere. That's how the modern applications are being designed. So in the lib file, what you'll see most of the time that main.dart just is not that much crowded. So we're gonna go ahead, right click and create a new folder. This folder usually called as my source or source or SRC, however you like to go with that. So that's the first step that we're gonna do. Create a new folder inside the lib source. This is going to be the source where we'll be keeping all of our widget, stateless and stateful, both of them. Some people like to separate them further as well. We probably will not do that. Now we're gonna create our very first class. So let's go ahead and create a new class here. The usually the, the syntax that everybody follows up here is app.dart. App is usually the first entry point uh, into our application and that's why we call that. Now surely we are just playing around with the things. Surely we'll be doing much more greater things with it. Right now just follow along with me. 
So obviously, whenever you create your first class, the first thing is copy or import the packages here. I'm going to walk you through with the easier way of copying the things is surely you can write that. But just click up here. Don't select everything. Just press Command C or Control C to copy that. No need to just highlight and select all of that. Just place the cursor there. Press Command C or Control C if you're on the PC and press Command V or Control V. That's the easier way to copy and paste. I know I'm just making a tutorial on copy and paste that sounds good. But yes, knowing your tools better always saves time. Okay, so this part is done. Now we're going to create a new class here. Now this class is going to extend an existing class. Remember inheritance and stuff we studied probably later on. So we're going to call this as app and this is going to extend. We can extend two things. We can go for state less and we can go for state full widget however you like to go with that now let me give you a quick tip up here so we're going to go for state less widget surely you can go for state less elements as well we're going to go for state less widget okay don't worry about this swiggly line it's going to remember an error we'll solve that later on let me tell you a quick tip about whether you want to have a stateless widget or stateful widget now in case you have something like this int account is equals to zero anything which has a declaration of an integer which you want to keep a track throughout the class that's a good sign that's a state full widget because you're caring about data your entire class is going to update some set of data so if this is the case that means you want to go for state full widget or state full element if this is not in your application probably you might might want to go for the state less widget okay as clear as possible again let's repeat that again along with me if it is stateless it is dataless if it is stateful it is dataful so that's all about the stateless widget and stateful widgets that we are having and that's it for this video make sure you hit that subscribe button as well and we're gonna catch up in the next video